beer terms explained. What does dank even mean anyway? When you first start tasting beer or when you first find craft beer and join the craft beer community, there are a lot of words and acronyms that people use in their descriptions and on their posts on Facebook and on Instagram that might not make sense to you straight away. Today, I'm going to go through five of those beer terms and explain to you what they mean. Number one, mouthfeel. Mouthfeel is a tasting term and it is literally about the feel of the beer in your mouth. Beers can be really thin or they can be really thick and viscous. Think about the comparison between um, a low ABV beer like a table beer or even a non-alcoholic beer, how that can be quite thin. If you then drank uh, an imperial stout that's really thick, unctuous, viscous, that's the difference in the mouthfeel of those two beers. You're also going to be thinking about uh, the carbonation, as carbonation is going to add a bit of tizz on your tongue. So mouthfeel can be different depending on what beers you're drinking. Number two, juicy. Now, some people say that juicy is reserved for the New England IPA. You're also going to see uh, various different spellings of juicy, sometimes with lots of O's in there. Juicy generally means that it can taste a bit like fruit juice. So that's great for the style New England IPA, as there should be lots of fruit flavours in there. Uh, that fruit juicy flavour can come from actual fruit. It could come from the hops. It could come from the yeast. So there are different ways of getting juicy in there. I usually find a beer juicy if it tastes a bit like orange juice or grapefruit juice. Some people also describe it like the juicy fruit chewing gum. It's going to make for a really refreshing and fruit forward beer. Number three, acronyms like DDH, DIPA Dipper or TIPA Tipper. Now you might see a lot of different acronyms used. So I'm going to explain those top three to you now. DDH. This refers to double dry hopped. This is what happens as part of the brewing process. As a quick recap, the brewing process, you steep malts in water to extract sugars. That is then the, the grains are removed from that water, which is now called wort. The wort is boiled. Hops and other ingredients can be added. That is then cooled down, yeast is added, it ferments the beer and adds alcohol. Hops can be added during that boiling process, but they also can be added on what's called the cold side after fermentation has finished. And when you add something at this point, it is called dry hopping. Double dry hopping is when double the amount of hops are added to the beer. By doing this, you're going to get more flavour and aroma from your hops more than bitterness. So brewers like to do this to get those citrusy, resinous, piney flavours from the American hops. Think of it as um, a really big tea bag with hops in it, dunked in your beer before it's finished being made. Now Dipper is a double IPA, also known as an Imperial IPA. It's called a double because generally double the hops are used from your regular IPA. These are usually now just referred to as dippers. They can also be higher ABV than your usual IPA. Uh, and a tipper is a triple IPA. So that means triple the amount of hops has been used. Doesn't necessarily mean that the ABV is double or triple that of a regular IPA. But to balance out these beers that have more hops in, generally more malt to use, and therefore the ABV does go up. Number four, dank. What does dank even mean anyway? Uh, so dank can refer to quite a vegetal aroma from the hops. Thinking weed marijuana. You've got to remember that hops are a cousin of marijuana. They're in the same family of plants. When a hop is used extensively in a beer, you can get those really resinous, sticky, 
piney smell and it can remind you a bit of marijuana. It's also been described as a bit of cat pee. Not so pleasant myself, but lots of people find that excellent in a beer. Number five and our final one is funky. Funky is generally used on sour beers or wild fermented beers. Um, the yeast that is used on that is wild, it's found in the air, and therefore it imparts some really interesting flavours. Think of flavours like earthy, um, words used for these types of, of flavours and aromas are horse blanket or barnyard, You're thinking wet wood, um, wet earth, as if you're walking around a farm, <laughs> if you've met a horse. Sounds a bit gross, but actually it can be very pleasant in the right kind of beer. So if you haven't tried a funky beer yet, I recommend that you do because they are some of my favourites. So there you have it. That's five beer terms that you might be confusing to you. Uh, let me know if you would like to find out part two, because I'm sure there are lots of other beer terms that we could explain. And if you would like to know more about tasting beer and using these terms, come and join us in my beer tasting course, Build Your Beer Vocabulary. Through live tastings and sensory exercises, we work out where the flavours and aromas in your beer are coming from and give you the words to be able to describe it with confidence. Come join us now.